Mecha Talk is a series of videos that covers mecha related topics. For this video, we'll be covering the origins and abilities of the mysterious Razephon, a being capable of remaking the entire universe. Joining me once again is Zeta Rice, who is a big fan of Razephon and had previously helped me with my Edeon Explained video. Hey there, I'm Zeta Rise, and although Gundam is my main thing, I actually really enjoy Razephon, so I'm pretty happy to be talking about it. With that said, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Razephon was a 26 episode anime series which aired in Japan in 2002. It was one of the first few anime produced by Studio Bones, the same studio famous for producing other mecha anime such as Eureka 7, Star Driver, and Captain Earth. Razephon was written and directed by Yutaka Izubuchi, a veteran in the industry who is well known for his work as a mecha designer. He has done the mecha designs for works such as Pet Labor, Galliant, and even Gundam. Helping Izubuchi with the production of Razephon was Studio Bones founder Masahiko Minami, who has helped with the production of other well-known anime such as Cowboy Bebop, Space Dandy, and Full Metal Alchemist. Razephon tells the story of 17-year-old Ayato Kamina, who lives within Tokyo as an ordinary artistic student. Due to an incident, Tokyo is enclosed within an impenetrable shell. It would seem as if the inhabitants within Tokyo are the only humans left on the planet. However, mysterious fighter planes manage to invade Tokyo, and in the middle of the attack, Ayato encounters two women, and in regular anime fashion, it would seem that his life would change forever. The first woman is the spunky Haruka Shito, who aims to take him out of Tokyo. The second is Reika Mishima, a strange girl who leads him to the Razaphon, a giant robot encased within a large, white, egg. Ayato awakens and pilots the Razaphon, eventually leaving Tokyo and learning the real truth about the world. One of the central elements in the story of Razaphon is music, and the amazing soundtrack of the series was delivered by the talented Ichiko Hashimoto. Hashimoto would also play an important role in the anime and provided the voice for Maya Kamina, Ayato's adoptive mother. In addition, Hashimoto would work with the legendary composer Yoko Kano to create Hemisphere, the iconic opening theme of the anime. Maya Sakamoto, the voice of Reika Mishima and one of the most talented and well-known voice actresses in the industry today, provided the vocals for the opening theme. Razephon draws inspiration from the 1970s mecha anime Brave Raidin. Izubuchi has stated that Razephon is meant to be a modern retelling of Raidin, and as such, both anime share a few visual and thematic similarities. Although, a lot of fans and reviewers really like to talk about the similarities it has to Neon Genesis Evangelion. I mean like, yeah, both share several similarities on the surface, but they're not the same show. They have very different themes and outlooks when it comes to human relationships. Interestingly enough, Izubuchi is good friends with Hideki Anno, the creator of Evangelion. Both of them have also worked on shows like Shah's Counter Attack and the live action Cutie Honey movie. Izubuchi even did some of the design work for the rebuild of Evangelion movies, while Studio Gainax helped with some of the in between animation work for Razephon. Overall, Razephon is unique. It manages to tell a very beautiful story about transcendence, love, and one's inner journey to find a place in this world. Razaphon would prove popular enough to receive several forms of media such as an OVA, a film compilation, novel and manga adaptations, a video game and a few appearances within the popular Super Robot Wars video game franchise. 2004's Super Robot Wars MX in particular would have Razaphon teaming up with Raidin and the Evas to protect the planet in epic fashion. The Blue-Blooded Mullions are the main antagonists of the series and have a long and complicated history. Their history dates back thousands of years before the birth of humanity. The Mullions live on the continent of Mu, and with their advanced science and technology, they were able to learn about the fundamental building blocks of the universe and how it can be reordered into a desired state. As the Great Empire Mu spread across the world, so did their architectural styles, technologies, and culture. 
Babam, a Mulian scientist, would be successful in creating an artificial god known as the Zephon. The Zephon, which is how the Mulians call the Razephon, can be piloted and controlled by an instrumentalist, a being with Mulian blood. However, when Babam tried piloting the Zephon for the first time, it led to the divide of the world, causing the continent of Mu to be trapped in an alternate Earth. As 95% of the alternate Earth is made up of water, the Mulians would use their advanced technology to create floating cities in the air. In addition to the world being divided, the Zephon was also split into two. One half of the Zephon would remain trapped in the prime Earth with Babam, and it would take the shape of a black egg. The other half of the Zephon would remain with the Mulians in the alternate Earth, and it took the shape of a white egg. The shells of these eggs would act as dimensional borders, which help to protect the Zephons from any outside harm. Babin found that the changes made by the Zephon system were unstable, and if not properly fixed, both worlds would be destroyed. He calculated that after about 5500 years, the dimensional barriers would be weakened enough for the Mulians to return, and through tuning, the two halves of Zephon would be able to rejoin and stabilize both worlds. He would spend the next thousands of years communicating with them in an alternate dimension while also preparing for their eventual return. Realizing that he was just too old to be a pilot and was never a suitable instrumentalist, he created the Baben Foundation in 1576, using its powers and influence to shape humanity's development from the shadows, so that humanity could start training suitable candidates to be the Zephan's instrumentalist. He would also use his resources to raise suitable hosts, so that he may take over their bodies and continue living till the return of the Mulians. However, as time went on, Babam started to doubt that the Mulians would be capable of using the Zephon to its full potential, and thus decided to play both sides, in case he needed humanity to use the Zephon instead. Babam would create Terra in 1987, a government organization created to battle the Mulians when they eventually returned. Due to witnessing humanity's violent nature in World War I and World War II, the Mulians deemed humanity a threat to their plans. As such, the Mulians would use offshoots of the Zephon system to create clay-based titans known as the Dolems. The Dolems serve as linking stones between the two dimensions, allowing the consciousness of a Mulian to subvert and control a prepared human. This linking process alters the linked human to become a full-blooded Mulian and also tightly binds them to the Dolem in question. Damage sustained by the Dolem results in injuries to both the human and the Mulian that is still in the alternate Earth. When a Dolem is defeated, it will disintegrate into blue blood and clay, while the linked human and Mulian are killed in the process. Most Dolems can generate harmonic barriers, attack using sound, and devastate entire fleets, cities, and islands with their energy beams. Some Dolems can even manipulate the weather, electricity, and suck their enemies into subspace, confuse their opponents with illusions, psychologically control entire populations, and even orbit around the planet. Smaller dolems such as the dotems are small infantry units, which are capable of swarming enemies with their large numbers. The first Great Mu War in 2013 had 6 million human casualties, a testament to the horrifying power of the Mu. And not to be outdone, the Babin Foundation used their data on the Razafon to create the Vermilions, dolems capable of being piloted by humans and have the power to destroy small islands with a single attack. In 1989, the Mu would send two sisters in the form of Maya and Quan over to the Prime Earth. Upon arriving, both sisters were found by Professor Shogo Rikudo and his assistant Shiro Kamina. Maya would marry Shiro and live among the humans, while Quan is collected by the Babam Foundation and put into stasis as she is of the ideal age to pilot the Zephon. A suitable instrumentalist like Quan would have carved markings on their body. Quan's genetic makeup would eventually be collected and used by the Babam Foundation to create other instrumentalists that are suitable enough to pilot the Zephon. One such instrumentalist is Ayato Kamina, who was born in 1998. Ayato shares the DNA of Quan and Shiro, effectively making him half human and half Mulian. Ayato would be raised by Maya, who acted as his adoptive mother, and in 2012, a 16 year old Ayato would encounter the love of his life, Haruka Mishima. However, the two would be separated in 2013 when Maya betrayed humanity and activates the absolute barrier around Tokyo, creating the Tokyo Jupiter Zone 
Iyata would remain trapped within Tokyo and given amnesia of his time before the Tokyo Jupiter event. Due to time passing much faster in the outside world, 14 years have already passed by for Haruka. She is now 29 years old and an agent of Terra, reunited with Iyata who is only 17 years old now. After leaving Tokyo Jupiter, Iyata would join Terra and live with the Raikudo residents, slowly learning and accepting the complex truth of the world and its purpose within it. A purpose that would determine the fate of the entire universe. Created by Babam, the Razephon is the titular mech of the series. It is connected physically, mentally, and emotionally to Ayato. Ayato is so closely linked to the Razephon that he can summon it simply by calling its name. At times, the Razephon will even awaken on its own to save Ayato if he's in danger and transport Ayato to safety. If the Razephon is damaged during battle, Ayato will mentally feel the damage as if his own body was damaged as well. While dormant, the Razephon's face is covered by a pair of large wings attached to its forehead. Normally, its eyes are red, but on occasions would turn golden with visible irises whenever Ayato is able to fully resonate with the Razaphon. This not only improves the fighting abilities of the machine, but allows it to see through illusions. And below its face is an egg-shaped barrier, which Ayato is absorbed through when entering. Ayato is then transported to the cockpit of the Razaphon, which is located somewhere below its chest. Reika Mishima, the mysterious girl who appears throughout the series, is actually the soul of the Razaphon. Her appearance is a manifestation of the person that Ayato's heart truly desires, which in this case is his high school sweetheart, Haruka Mishima. By assuming this form, Reika is able to ensure that Ayato is cooperative and trusting of the Razephon. Reika can choose to manifest wherever she likes and allow herself to be seen by others if she so desires. In addition, she can even manipulate the minds of others to suit her needs. However, if the instrumentalist decides to reject the soul of the Razephon, the Razephon itself will eventually cease to exist. Ayato initially rejects Reika after learning the truth about her, but he later chooses to accept her and pilots the Razephon once again. The Razephon stands to be at roughly 50 meters tall and has shown a number of impressive feats and abilities throughout the course of the series. It is capable of flight at speeds that exceeds even those of fighter jets and can even teleport. It is impervious to conventional weaponry, although it can still be harmed by dolems if Ayato isn't careful enough. It is capable of close-range melee combat and even use its wings and its foreheads as a weapon. When up against the deadly quantum waves of other dolems, Rosafon can counter them by generating its own quantum wave. In addition, it can even produce a quantum corridor, which allows it to enter a tunnel to different worlds. This allowed the Rosafon to easily fly in and out of supposedly impenetrable barriers such as Tokyo Jupiter. With his energy manipulation, Razephon can unleash energy blasts from his hands to devastate his opponents. He can even encase people within energy balls for their protection. Razephon can generate a harmonic barrier as well as use a raid shield to protect itself from enemy attacks. He can generate an energy sword for close range combat and release a strong pillar of light capable of clearing large masses of clouds. For long range combat, Razephon can fire light arrows that can move so fast that they break the sound barrier upon being released. With just one of these arrows, Razephon was capable of killing a dolem orbiting around the planet in a matter of seconds. By unleashing his powerful voice attack, Razephon is capable of blowing away large masses of enemies. While powerful, Razephon has only shown a fraction of its full power in this form. When Mulian cities start appearing all across the planet and both worlds are on the brink of destruction, Ayato makes the ultimate choice. To completely merge with the Razaphon in order to protect his loved ones. This new Razaphon, also known as the Shinsei Razaphon, contains the facial and vocal features of Ayato. It has near instant regeneration can even darken the clouds around it just with its presence alone. With just its voice attack, it can send shockwaves capable of damaging all those unlucky enough to be within its vicinity. And when it's Rainbow Wave, it can devastate entire continents with just one attack. When the Shinsei Razephon was first born, Ayato had little control over it and ended up killing both friend and foe without hesitation. When Ayato realized what he had done, he reverts back to his human form to say his final goodbyes to his loved ones. 
Having fully merged with the soul of Razephon, Ayato is able to disappear and appear at whim and can instantly recover from any wound. In the final episode, Ayato faces off against Quan, who had returned to the site of the Mulians. Having merged with the other Razephon that was born from a black egg, Quan had also become a Shinsei Razephon. Ultimately, Ayato is able to defeat and absorb Quan to become the true and complete Razephon. Ayato eventually unleashes the Song of Tuning, not only repairing the dimensional split, but also remaking the entire world to his own liking. In this new world, the Mulians never attacked. Ayato was never separated from Haruka. The world is safe, and both Ayato and Haruka grew up to be happily married, having a lovely daughter named Kwan. Overall, the Rossifon is a mechanical god substantiated by time and can easily travel across universes. With the ability to tune the world, it can choose to destroy or reshape entire universes to its liking. However, with Ayato as its instrumentalist, Rossifon has the heart of a human and is more than just a machine. And with that, we have come to the end of our video. We hope you have enjoyed this video as much as we had fun making it. Feel free to subscribe to the channel if you like what I do, and do leave a comment giving some ideas or topic suggestions for future Mecha Talk videos. Well hey, so uh, this was pretty fun even though I don't really record that much anymore. So uh, yeah, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed my voice I guess, I'm not sure. <laughs> See, I haven't really done much in a while, but I do have some fun plans I want to do. When exactly am I doing those plans, you may be asking? Ha, <laughs> that's it's, it's a good question, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> but for now, you can just have some fun watching some of my old videos that I may or may not be hating at this current moment. Such as my somewhat Christmas video. That video being about the only Christmas show to actually matter. 0080, War in a Pocket. So yeah, thanks for having me talk about Rossifon. It's not Evangelion.